guys, so in today's video we'll be installing a head unit on my Toyota MR2. Now with most installs it's as simple as plug and play with some adapting wires, but it turned out that the previous owner had actually installed his own head unit and done his own wiring. So before taking the car apart we assumed it'd be a simple job, but not in this case. It turned out we had to do our own wiring. So most of the video is of Lachlan and I trying to figure out where to even begin, but if you skip to here it'll go over in depth on how to wire your own head unit in, right from the wiring harness on practically any car. Hope this video helps, enjoy. Today we'll be installing a new head unit for my Toyota MR2 because the one that I have is a very outdated Alpine head unit. It doesn't have any sort of Bluetooth connectivity and it doesn't even have an aux cord. The only cord that it does have is this <laughs> monstrosity of a cord which is like two meters long. Say hello fam. Which is like two meters long and you need to have a USB. So I've connected all my music up to this USB here. Lachlan is, has been kind enough to lend me his old car's <laughs> Sony head unit, top of the line, it's got Bluetooth and everything, it's the same one I have in my Camry. Million colour combinations. Million colour combinations. Wowee. And this will allow me to connect my music up um, via Bluetooth, so I won't have to keep going upstairs on my computer and putting music on my USB. Alright, so we're going to start off by removing this I guess, see I'm pretty sure just Yep, pull up on it. Now first we've got to take the shift knob up. off. Take that off. Pull the boot off. Ugh. Bro, you need to fucking replace that. No, no, it's horrible. Alright, and then I guess we just pull this off. So, whoop. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, pretty easy so far. Whoa, that's dirty as. Whoa, that's 21 years worth of dirt right there. Ooh. 21 years worth of human slime. Yum. Next we're gonna just take out this I guess. Filled with uh, with uh, some gum. Yum dude! Clean car! Alright, so once you've removed all this, take out the cigarette ashtray and there are two bolts holding it in. So I've already taken one out, we're just gonna yank this one out. I'm guessing we have to take this one out under here because this all looks like one big piece. Oh, actually, let's pull that out as well. Yeah, I'm going to remove this screw just here, just underneath the cigarette lighter. Oh, fuck. Alright, so I've removed the outer trim, I guess, and all we needed to do was take a cord out from the hazard lights and the cord out from the back of the cigarette lighter. Chuck that aside. Now would be a good time to clean up in here. Alright, waiting for the big crack and then strip. Looks like it's already stripping. <laughs> Alright, so we've taken all four screws out, so this should just come out like that. Nice. Whoa. That's a clusterfuck of shit. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to start removing stuff. Okay, so we finally have this old head unit out in pretty good condition. I'm not going to install these cup holders or anything again because... Oh, maybe I should, but... So this is the head unit that we're going to be installing. It's a Bluetooth head unit by Sony. It's the MEX N515. 0BT and I've got it in my Camry so I know it's a very good head unit. It also comes with an amplifier already installed in it. It's a just a, a small little amp to boost the speakers so it's not bad. It's the mess that we've made so far. We've seemed to have run into a bit of an issue. <laughs> uh, the person who previously installed this has done their own sort of wiring and didn't go with the stock connectors it seems so we're gonna have to learn how to wire the head unit in manually. I don't know how the hell we're going to do that, but... Okay, so it's now the next day. We have ran into a couple of problems. Um, firstly, that the person that previously installed the head unit didn't actually use cables um, that you can buy from the shop, so he's actually gone and wired it right into the wiring harness. So we're going to have to do our own wiring, unfortunately. Unfortunately. So it's not that difficult to actually find uh, diagrams online, but pretty much Lachlan has searched up which each of the wires from this harness actually are. So not the, not all these ones, these are from the, what is this, ISO out or something like that. So upon further inspection, we found out that we actually had to wire the head unit in manually because the previous owner had gone ahead and cut some wires connecting the adapters and the wiring harness, which meant that we had to wire the head unit in manually. Now that's not really a big problem because it's actually very simple if you follow these steps. So in the box of every head unit, you will receive obviously the head unit itself and some wires. Now in every box, they will include a set of instructions which tells you exactly which of these wires 
does what. So if we look at the instructions in the box, it pretty much tells us that this wire is the constant power wire and the rest of these are speaker wires. So you just need to look at each color and see what it does on the instructions. What I did is I actually wrote them down. So I've got the yellow one is the battery constant 12 volt. The red one is the ignition. Uh, we've got the black and green of the left rear speakers and so on. So the first step would be to write down what every single one of these wires that comes out of the box of the head unit does. All right, so step number two would be to find out what each of the wires of the wiring harness does. So in order to do that, you'll either need to bring out a manual for your car, which tells you what each wire does, or do your own research. So the first thing that I did was pretty much search up MR2 head unit wiring. So there you go, MR2 head unit wiring. And the first link right here, if I just scroll all the way down and you read from these forums, it tells me exactly what each colored wire from the wiring harness in the car does. So if we look here, we can see that the white wire in the wiring harness is the right rear speaker negative wire. Um, we can see that the gray wire right here is the car radio switch 12 volt wire. And we can see that the yellow, blue and yellow wire is the car radio constant 12 volt wire. It's as simple as that. So now all you need to do is to go with what you've written down so we can see the yellow wire from the head unit cable is the battery constant 12 volt. So we need we would need to match that up with the other battery constant 12 volt. And if we look here, the battery constant 12 volt from the wiring harness is the blue and yellow one. So it's as simple as connecting each wire to its mating one, just by looking at some instructions online. Now obviously a smart idea would be to solder them and do it correctly. So if you don't know how to solder, make sure you look up some other instructions online. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done is remove all the wires from this original uh, sort of set up here and I'm just gonna pretty much screw the wires in the head unit cable so I don't have to do any sort of soldering definitely the lazy way to do it but since this is all here I may as well utilize it because then I can just use these connectors it's gonna be much easier um, I've also written down what all the wires are on the connector so luckily I had them all labeled these the one that came with the um, head unit all the wires were labeled so if you look carefully you can read there's some writing on the actual wires themselves. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Alright, so we're finally done. I somehow managed to wire everything up. Exactly how I said, so pretty much I used an online thing to tell me, online forum to tell me which wire was what from the harness, and then just read off the singular wires that came off this head unit, and just wired everything up. So, everything seems to be working. We've got, uh, RGB head unit in and all we're gonna do is just nicely put everything together and and we're done so huh, I'm excited. I don't know how that worked. There you go Sweet All right, so just a little update I've pretty much gone ahead and soldered all the wires that I've needed to um, the rest of them I don't haven't need to solder because they're connected to these bridging sort of connector things that you just screw wires together with. Hopefully they don't come out and short each other, but I'm willing to take that risk. Right now, I've decided to put a switch for the antenna because sometimes I like listening to the radio without the antenna coming up because it makes your car look kind of weird. So um, coming off the radio wire, this wire goes all the way back down, all the way here. Pretty much I've got a switch here that I've got from a kit. Um, you can buy any sort of switch on eBay or anything like that. So I've just decided to do this. So when I put, when I flick a button, um, the antenna comes up. And when I flick a button, the, the antenna comes down because this head unit doesn't actually have the option for that. As soon as you turn the car and the antenna comes up automatically, not just when you switch to radio. So it gets a bit annoying. So I've decided to put a switch in. I've tested it, all works. All I'm gonna do now is solder these last wires and put everything back together. All right, so we're just connecting all the cables up to the back of the head unit now. Got the microphone put in, then I'm gonna put the power cable in and then all the connections and the 16 point connector in or whatever, how many point that is, and we should be good to go. One thing I forgot to mention is make sure you don't forget to mount the ground cable, the ground cable, sorry, to any sort of metal contact that you have near the head unit. So I'm just gonna mount mine against this little hole here um, with the screws. All right, so that pretty much concludes everything 
focus, thank you. So that concludes everything. The install was pretty easy. Um, it was a little intimidating at first because of all the wiring, but in the end, it's actually not that difficult. So I have a Sony MEX 515BT, I believe. Um, it's a Bluetooth head unit and it does a very good job of, you know, giving you some sort of sound quality over the stock uh, head unit. If you guys ever need any help and don't understand some parts of the video, just comment below. I will respond to like pretty much 90% of comments. Feel free to comment down below. Anyway, I hope you guys kind of understand what I'm doing and I hope it does help. I'll see you guys in the next one.